it is great to have you all here and Vernon it would be um great if we could just dive straight in if that's all right and we'll let the oh. let people join as as we go so it would be really good if you were able to tell us all a little bit more about your journey with tinnitus before you started with the one-to-one -one program mm. okay so I had a I, I had a very sudden onset of tinnitus. I'd never had tinnitus before. Um, last November, uh, one night, I went to bed as a completely normal person. And at three o'clock in the morning, I woke up with tinnitus. And it was extremely loud and very distressing. Um, I, you know, I was freaking out, no idea what was going on. Um, and, um, spent the next few days, you know, desperately trying to find um, an answer to why I was experiencing tinnitus. And I went through probably, you know, things that a lot of the people listening are familiar with, you know, like, you know, trying to unblock my ears and, you know, putting stuff that, you know, putting stuff in my ears and, you know, um, trying to get an appointment with a doctor, um, I had a lot of pressure on me at the time as well because I was about to go on holiday and people were sort of saying, you know, like, oh, you, you want to get rid of this before you go on holiday. And, uh, you know, so it was just a, it was a really, really uh, distressing and difficult and uh, traumatic time. Um, uh, and then I finally um, managed to see a doctor um, who um, looked at my ears and said, there's nothing wrong with your ears at all. We can't. Can't tell you why you're experiencing tinnitus. Um, and uh I went for an ear test, a hearing test, and there's no problems in my hearing. So I don't really have any significant hearing loss apart from the usual stuff that you get when you're, you know, aging. Um and um I suppose, you know, that was a really, really low point. Um, kind of realizing that there wasn't going to be any kind of medical, um, in my case anyway, any any kind of medical solution, um, and that there was a possibility that you know this might be it. I might just have tinnitus, and that I you know was going to have to figure out how I, how I was going to live with it. And I actually, you know, kind of really wondered whether or not that was going to be possible too. Well. Hello. Yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hazards of working at home as the cat uh, yeah um and i went through a lot of you know i did a lot of research on the internet i read a lot of horror stories that really freaked me out um you know people that you know um described um really horrific cases of tinnitus and you know i i, I obviously sort of you know i was terrified that might be my situation too and I went through, um, a, you know, a, a, a period of denial, complete denial that, you know, this was, you know, that this was, this was going to be me from, from, from there on in. And that meant that for a while, you know, I was, I suppose, um, kind of really reluctant to look at things like um, habituation and um, CBT on those kind of approaches because if I if I you know if I if I went down that path that meant that I was accepting that I had tinnitus and that wasn't going to go away. Um, but I got to a point where, you know, actually quite quickly that I realised that you know this was probably going to be the best solution. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Can you just before we kind of move on, it'd be good to hear a little bit about um kind of you talked about that initial period of time that was really traumatic kind of yeah. discovering that there wasn't medical help for in your case and um you know many people who we talk to are told by GPs and, and well-meaning doctors like oh there's nothing you can do mm. um, which can be really very difficult to hear yeah but it'd be good to know a little bit about um kind of how you were how you were finding it day to day, like how it was affecting your life in terms mm. of, 
yeah, yeah. in terms of day to day. So uh, I just remember feeling really low um, and a kind of, you know, a lot of the sort of colour and vibrancy and joy that I experienced in my life kind of sort of drained away and everything just seemed really kind of about tinnitus. So mm-hmm. it was kind of just defining me and my life was, you know, that that was waking up in the morning and, oh, I can hear it. Oh, here we, here we go again. And, and um, you know, well, and I'm kind of almost, you know, life became a, a you know, a, a sort of performance in a way. So I'd be walking around, you know, at a street market, for example, with my wife, you know, on a lovely day, looking at lovely things. And actually I was just listening to tinnitus and freaking out inside, you know, because, you know, it's a very lonely experience to, to, to you know, to be listening to this sound that nobody else can hear. Um, and you don't really want, feel like you want to talk about it constantly to, to, your, to your loved ones and your family because I mean, they don't want to hear that. So, um, and it's, it's very, very hard if you don't have, if you've never had tinnitus to actually understand the impact that it has on you. So, yeah, it completely, you know, overtook my life during that period. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm sure that is a very familiar story to loads of us who are here. So yeah, thank you. Um, it'd be good to know, yeah, what you, tr- it was interesting when you were saying, you know, I tried to clean my ears and uh, did, tried all sorts. Like what, what are some of the things you tried? Because I'm sure plenty of people have tried all sorts. Um, you know, that's kind of home syringe kits. Yeah. yeah I remember, I'm, you know, trying to get you know, wax out of my ears. And actually, weirdly, coincidentally, a huge amount of wax came out of my ears. And I thought, oh, that's it. Great. Brilliant. And then it started again. And I was like, oh, uh, that wasn't it. Um, so, yeah, that was that there was that. Um, and then kind of just trying to massage the ears. Um, and. And then, you know, I mean, really, that was that was it, you know, it was that was the extent of it and then it was um you kind of a period of you know just just really trying to figure out what I was going to do next and that's when I came across Otto from you know Mm. searching for these you know solutions and you know I decided to just try it and give it a go Mm. well that's good nice (laughs) that you weren't kind of going around the houses for ages and ages yeah how did you find Otto? You found it through just Googling? Yeah, I just Googled tinnitus and, uh, you know, it was pretty close to the top of the page. Um, um, and I'd also been reading, um, you know, a few articles that, you know, other people that aren't, aren't connected with Otto had written about, you know, the process of habituation mm. and um, how, you know, mindfulness and... Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy can help to you know ac- accelerate that natural process of habituation yeah um and I was attracted to that because I'm you know I practice yoga and meditation anyway so I just thought you know kind of, this is going to this this potentially you know might might help I, I mean I was hugely skeptical as well you know mm. because when you read stuff about you know like meditating and you're, you're kind of experiencing this howling noise in your ear. It's like, how am I ever going to meditate again? You know, it's one of the things that was really, really painful for me was thinking that I would never, ever be able to sit in a quiet place and meditate again, which is an important part of my life. Um, and now I can. Now, you know, I just sat this evening in a silent room, no masking sounds, and meditated for half an hour, oh, which is amazing. Cool. Yeah, and this was there too. So it was like, yeah. Yeah, that is great. And it is great. really good to hear because I think, I mean, whether you meditate or not, I think everyone enjoys silence at some point in their life, right? And when you develop tinnitus, you have to develop a new kind of silence. And it is really hard. You mentioned habituation, and I'm just conscious that it might be some people don't know what that is. Um so just to explain to those of you who might not know, habituation is um, the point at which you'll still have tinnitus, 
but you won't be paying attention to it. So your mind gets so used to it that it just stops paying it attention. It kind of, you don't have a reaction to it. So if you're struggling to sleep or at the moment, if you're feeling really frustrated by it, rather than those reactions to tinnitus, it will just be neutral. So no frustration or going to sleep. So that's what habituation is. It's still there. Your brain is just no longer draws your attention to it. Would you agree with that, Vernon? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, yeah, it'd be good to know. So did you use the app before you came to the one-to-one -one coaching program? Yeah, I did. I went through the whole app, actually. I went all the way through the program, got to the end. Um, and, and then, yeah, I actually spoke to uh, Ed Otto about the one-to-one -one program at the end when, when I finished the program. And uh, we mm. had a, you know, a chat about it. and. Uh, you know, I just decided, yeah, I think it's it's really, really going to help. And so, yeah. yeah. So how come you how come you decided to go for it? So I was. Um, the, the app really, really helped going through the program was really helping, but I was on a roller coaster. Um, so I was experiencing. Um, periods where you know, I, I wouldn't react to the sound. If I heard it, it was fine. It was, you know, not good or not bad. Um, and then even periods where I didn't hear it. And I still, I do have periods where I don't hear tinnitus. What was happening to me was I would have a day where I didn't hear tinnitus and I would be like, yes, that's it. It's, the, it's done, it's gone. And then, you know, you'd hear it, I'd hear it. And I'd just be devastated. I'd be in bits. And the app was helping me to manage that and get back on track. Mm. But I was still kind of having those kind of just huge peaks and troughs all the time. So at the point when I finished the program and was really wondering where I was going to go next, I knew that I wasn't, I wasn't there. I didn't really know what the next step was and it, you know it was just fortuitous that I spoke to Ed about the one-to-one -one program at that point um because it was still having an impact on my life that was was it was better than way way better 100% better than when it started but it was still not you know, I said I didn't have my life back and that's really what I wanted yeah understandably yeah and um in terms of when you got started, so you were with Anna, weren't you? Um, yeah. We've got a number of different coaches and they offer, just sorry, just to explain, the one-to-one -one program is um, you meet one of our coaches regularly for 45 minutes over Zoom like this and, um, yeah, work on a personalised program. So it'd be good to know kind of what stands out as um, kind of things that you learned along the way that you found particularly helpful. I mean, I'm sure for loads of people here, they, you know, maybe the one-to-one -one programs for them, maybe not. And it'd be just good to know kind of what lessons you found really valuable along the way. Um, I think that it, it helped me to start to unpick the experience of tinnitus. And it, so what I really believe is that actually the problem with tinnitus is it isn't the sound in your ears, it's not your not your problem your problem is your mind and the way you're reacting to it is the issue that's what's causing your suffering actually um and what it did is it started to help me to unpick that experience because you know that you know it's as anna often says you know tinnitus is like a pressure cooker the more you react to it the louder it gets the more upset you get by it the louder it gets and I think before the one-to-one, -one, my perception was, oh, the tinnitus keeps getting louder. But actually, in my case anyway, the tinnitus doesn't really ever get louder. It's always the same. It's just how much my brain is paying attention to it at that particular point. Mm -hmm. And going through the program with Anna helped me to start to pick that and want to pick, unpick that and understand that. And one of the big things that we started doing early on was journaling. And that that was just a 
huge, huge breakthrough to start to write down the experience. Um, and you know, what I did was I wrote about everything in my day. So I didn't just write about tinnitus. I wrote about all the wonderful things I'd done in the day, things that been difficult, frustrations. And that's when I started to see like, okay, you know, I had a really bad day at work. I had a really difficult meeting. And now my tinnitus is really, really loud. Go figure. You know, mm. these are absolutely linked. And, you know, I had a lovely day, went out to the park, didn't notice my tennis, or didn't notice it that much, or I did notice it didn't bother me so much, you know. So um, I started to see that, and then I started to unpick that really, the, you know, my perception of tennis is more, is, is more, it became more and more about environment, you know. So, you know, it came, became more and more to the point where I perceived tinnitus when I'm in a quiet environment with no ambient sound and as soon as I move out of that environment you know I, I become less, less aware of it and then when I do hear it the reaction is neutral usually not always from yeah, my, it's not shaky days <laughs> of course oh that's really cool to hear that process it, just this is quite a practical question just about journaling and it's more I'm thinking mm, yeah kind of inspiring me maybe I'll, maybe I'll have good journaling do you, did you write um did you write in a notebook or did you voice note or how did you go about actually I, journaling? how did you do I, it I wrote in a notebook um but that's because I'm a bit of a stationary geek and I like buying pens and I like buying notebooks so this is a great excuse for me to buy a new notebook um but yeah that was that was you know my my approach I'm sure there's loads of I think there are lots of different solution, um, suggestions on, on the app about different ways you can do it. As you say, you could you could record it or you could type it, I guess, in your computer or text mm. it. But, I, you know, it was my, I just like to, you know, write mm. with a pen and paper sometimes. Yeah, and I know that Anna yeah. talks about the, the therapeutic element of actually writing, putting pen to paper. And I know that when you're, when your mind is looping around to certain thoughts, actually putting pen to paper and actioning that and putting it on paper can be really helpful. Just it's the really, writing. It's really helpful. And then reviewing, reviewing the journal as well and, and kind of just, um, you know, um, reflecting on it is, it, it was, it's so important because you know, especially if you're having a really hard day or if you've been having a spike, you know, you can think like, oh, this tennis it just goes on and on and on and on. And then you look back at your journal and realize that actually, you know, you, you've only been experiencing a spike for, you know, half a day and three, the last three days have been really, really good. You can completely forget that when tennis is really intrusive, that actually, you know, you've had these really good periods. So it's great to be able to do that. And then it's also, um, I think important to you can use the journal to kind of acknowledge the positive and good things that you are doing for yourself and for tinnitus and how you've done well so you know I remember having a spike and you know I, I wrote down the stuff that I'd done you know breathing and visualizations that I'd done you know and I could go back then and see you know that I'd, I'd actually had agency as we often, as you often say in the in the app Totally. Tennis, you know and you know I could reflect on stuff that I'd done that had been effective yeah it's a really good way of embedding that lesson I think it's hard yeah. and that's a great way of kind of learning it practically yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I can see on the on the chat um someone was asking kind of what is this program is it an app is it uh so just to be clear Otto has an app um, that you can find on the app store. So either the app store or the play store. Um, but we do also offer one-to-one -one sessions with a um, tinnitus specialist. And that's what we're talking about at the moment. Um, there's a question here. I'm going to answer live from Michael. That's um, how did you manage or handle the emotions along the way? I think you've talked a little bit about it. Um, yeah. 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 Um, using really using breathing you, you know there's there is a real link between the breath and the mind um and you know taking slow deep 
breaths and lengthening your exhalation, you know, it has a calming effect, um, mm. not just on the mind, but also, you know, kind of that feeling in the stomach when you're feeling really upset and, you, you know, anxious. It, 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 it really does, does have a beneficial effect. So I think that was a, a really, really big, big thing. And then I just keep going back to the journaling because, you know, being able to just write down and write through, you know, your the emotions that you're experiencing, negative emotions and positive emotions. Um, those those are those are things that really, really helped. Mm. Yeah, thank you. It's part of um it is part of CBT, isn't it? Is one of the thought traps we can get ourselves in is um filtering out the positive and it's such a strong trap and I think we all do it for tinnitus and for lots of other issues in life we just filter out that positive and just having some concrete evidence of the positive as well like so even if in your journal you said today I did some breathing Mm -hmm. just the ability sometimes if you're having a really awful day the fact that you stopped and did some breathing is a huge achievement and you know such a positive to focus on whether or not it made a difference that day, the fact you did it is huge. And I think, yeah, it's just so easy to filter out the positive when you're, you know, going through the trials that tinnitus can bring. I think um, that's really important what you said there as well, because it might not happen, it might not help on the day, especially if you're having a big spike. Mm-hmm. You might stop and do the breathing and it might not really feel like it's helping, but it does in the long term. It does. It all builds, it all builds and builds and accumulates. Over, over the over a period that's it and I think just to kind of add some context I mean breathing helps on a number of levels um it, just pressing pause but um when we're in that stress cycle what happens is you kind of think you're in you, you notice the tinnitus you feel stressed and like you're in danger and you, your body and your mind respond that draws your attention to the tinnitus even more so you respond again with stress or anxiousness or irritation and then you notice the tinnitus more and what breathing does just in the it's not the only thing you can do but as a first first step it just interrupts that cycle so rather than going round and round that negative loop you stop it and you notice the tinnitus and you breathe rather than respond in a way that makes you notice it more and it's a very basic physiological thing so even if your mind is still racing just letting your body breathe will really help. As Vernon says, your mind might keep going, but your body will respond to just realizing you're not in danger because you're slowing your breathing down. Um, and if you want kind of a way of breathing, we we tend to recommend five counts in and then seven counts out. Um, but you can use a count that works for you. Um, do keep kind of bringing questions into the q and a if if you've got any in particular um otherwise i'm going to keep hogging and asking my own questions um i think it would be good to know if you had any advice to someone who was considering well maybe there are two questions here any advice to someone at the beginning of the journey so they've just developed tinnitus mm. and maybe any advice to someone who's been dealing with tinnitus for a very long time mm. um, those two things it'd be good to know yeah what advice you might give um i guess the the advice i give to people if they just started experiencing tinnitus is um that there is definitely hope that you know it will it, it 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 will improve. You might not be able to get rid of your tinnitus completely, but you will be able to get to a better place. It won't be easy. It's really hard work, but you you can do it, and everyone can do it. Um, so I think that's just understand that and just just really hold on to that. You know, I, I read you know a, a few really really good articles by um, I can't remember the person's name now. That, that were along that that line and it just really helped me it just gave me that sense of hope yeah uh, I think the stat is something like you know over 95 percent of people habituate you will yeah. get there and with help you know you'll definitely get there yeah 
just worth yeah knowing. yeah and then i think that's you know it's a similar message for people that have experienced it for a long time and i hold my hands up because i you know i haven't experienced it that long it's it's been six months it's not been years like some people that i know that, that have lived with it um but um i think you know do do you know do 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 the work and i think it's never too late to do it but i think because i think that's the thing with tinnitus the 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 block to habituation is when you get stuck in that loop people get stuck in the in the whole kind of hearing tinnitus getting anxious and then you know that reptile part of your brain that thinks it's a tiger in the woods that they're listening to and you know triggers the fight or flight response and then you know just it just gets you know it's this feedback loop and you can break that cycle um yeah that's my advice thank you <laughs> if we, i haven't actually given you a chance to say kind of how are you now because we heard your story at the beginning mm. and you know how very yeah. difficult that it that was and it'd be good to just yeah maybe finish unless there are more more questions finish on yeah how are you now how does tinnitus affect you now okay um so most days tinnitus is either um it's either it's it's there in the background it's usually very far away very faint and easily ignored and a little bit of masking a little bit of music or you know just being in a conversation like i am now and i'll just forget about it completely and i can go out at the weekend and have fun with my wife and not not think about it or hear about it hear, hear it at all until maybe i get back in and you know go to bed and it's quiet in the bedroom and then i hear it a little bit um and then other days like it can be very you know quite loud um i don't know why that is I, it doesn't seem to be any pattern i guess apart from maybe sometimes when i've had difficulty sleeping um i haven't had much sleep it might be a bit louder but usually there's no real reason it's just like it seems like any other day one day it's just very quiet and far away and the next day for whatever reason randomly it's 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 a bit louder but usually i um don't really have any problems now with um with that i just feel you know it's just it's just part of the ambient sound around um and i don't attend to it really um and then usually when that happens when i when i've noticed it's louder it will eventually fade as the as the day goes on um i'm at the point now where i can you know i can sit in a quiet room and then you know be with the tinnitus and that's okay and um i'm getting to a point where i can sleep without listening to sounds at night so getting close to that as well so you know i just feel like it's generally you know is it's improving um mm -hmm. time <laughs> <laughs> um we've got a we've got lots of questions coming in um i'm gonna ask a couple that are to you vernon and then a couple that are about sound therapy and i'll cover those in a moment and nighttime i'll cover those as well but um susanna's asked to you do loud environments exacerbate your tinnitus and do you avoid them no i don't avoid anything now I, I when i first got to it as i did and like i mean i remember i had tickets to a band that i wanted to see i've been wanting to see them for ages and i didn't go i was really 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 scared about going um and then um one of my favorite bands announced concert um when i just started the one-to-one -one therapy and i really wanted to go and I talked to Anna, my therapist, about it, and she just really encouraged me, just do it, just start to live your life. Um, I bought some really, really good earplugs. I went to the gig, and the next step was fine. I didn't, you know, didn't have any bad effects at all. Um, so I, I don't, I'm not affected by loud environments. I don't enjoy loud environments particularly, but I'm, I'm not affected by them as, 
so I don't, yeah and I know that's it's personal because I know you know there are different forms of tinnitus you know that, that can be triggered by loud noises but yeah so that's my own personal experience and you know just say everyone's different as yeah. well but yeah. I definitely, I, the point about trying not to avoid things is important I think because I think you've got to try and live your life and that's really really important um like the first time I took a flight as well, I was really, really scared to, to get on the plane. But again, it didn't have any problems, it didn't cause me any problems. Um, and, you know, I think you could, there's a potential to start stopping doing things that you love because of tinnitus and that makes it worse. Yes, absolutely. The stress of that is absolutely yeah. not worth it. The, I think if you do have tinnitus that's more reactive, um, I think it's a case of building up slowly. So, you know, um, like, like you said, wear ear protection, if you know it's going to be really loud, protect your hearing, have the kind of safety of knowing you're doing um, it right by your body. But actually the loud, it, if it is at a safe volume, for example, your spouse watching telly or something and it's irritating you, it's worth asking, okay, is this noise at a safe level? yes okay in that case I'm going to go to another room do some breathing get myself into a calmer state and then I'm going to go to that louder environment for a little bit give it a bit of time come away again and then build it up and actually as your brain understands that it's okay and that you can do this the less stressful you will find it with time um so I think it's just a case of building it up and if, it, if the volume is at a safe level, then you're not doing yourself any damage. So as Vernon said, you want to keep doing the things you love. It's really important to um, not lock yourself away, but to do your best to do it, build up, be kind to yourself along the way. And um, yeah, and, and go back to, you know, the pub, for example, or wherever it might be. <laughs> um, Jennifer asked if you use noise cancelling headphones like at work or at any other points no I, I i don't i um i i i play music when i'm working at home i work up work from home a lot so i play music at, at home i did that anyway before to, to you know i just I, it's a big part of my life um uh but that that does help you know if the tinnitus is a bit loud it, it you know it takes the it takes the edge off um but I don't, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't try, I don't really do anything uh, uh, to, 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 to cancel mm. noise. Um, I do often sleep with sleep buds. I bought the Bose sleep buds and I like to listen to the sound of rain as I fall asleep. Um, uh, to be honest, I, I like, I love that so much that I probably, even if my tinnitus just stopped tomorrow, I'd probably carry on doing it. It's yeah and I think that's right. the important thing so if you're wearing noise cancelling headphones because you would anyway and you enjoy that then carry on but if you're doing it because you're avoiding something or because you're fearful of something then that might be something to work through and to think okay what am I avoiding here is it actually a threat um yeah uh I'm just going to come back to a couple of questions in the chat that um are being asked I've lost my chat screen one sec. here it is so um, someone was saying, uh, is white noise helpful? Um, does it enable the tinnitus to fight against you? And there was another one, how many hours of kind of sound therapy or music therapy can you do? So just to speak into that little bit, um, what we would recommend here, at Otto, is to listen to distracting sounds if you find them helpful something ideally actually something in your real world environment like a fan or um yeah maybe some gentle music or like Vernon like the sound of rain and put it on at a relatively low level so that your mind can focus on it as a distraction as is useful there's no set amount of time that you want to be playing it in order to habituate it isn't like if you play it for 12 hours the tinnitus will get less. It doesn't work like that, but that can be really helpful to just tune into if you're finding it really hard to tune out of the tinnitus sound. And I would say it's particularly helpful at night 
when the kind of the distractions of the day fade away. But as you listen to it, what you'll probably find is as you habituate, you need it less and less because actually your mind is so fine with the sound of your tinnitus. You don't need to listen to this distracting sound all the time. So if you're at the beginning of your journey, go ahead and listen to it. There's no set amount of time. Although I would say if you're listening to it at every given moment you're awake, possibly you're listening to it a little bit too much. But then just notice as you need it less and less as you get used to the tinnitus sound and as you, um, yeah. Um, I was told by my audiologist that you should use masking for no more than four hours a day. I think that's really fair. The problem with using it too much is you become really reliant on it. The main thing is play it at a safe volume. So whether that's from a speaker or your headphones, just make sure it's set at a safe volume. And your audiologist has probably said that so that you don't become overly reliant on a distracting sound. And actually you can just get on with your life, getting used to the um, noise of the tinnitus as, uh, as you might hear it. I don't know if that's what Anna was saying to you, Vernon, or similar to that. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's important. Yeah, she did. You know, she she said it's important not to avoid the sound of tinnitus. You know, like you don't have to listen to it all the time, but you know, if you're actively you know avoiding it, then you know I think that's that's not going to help the habituation process. Yeah, if you go into the app actually and listen to the success story from yourself, part one and part two, I think. Um, he used to listen, he had a band around his head where he listened to it all the time. And then as he habituated, he needed it less and less. And he realized how unhealthy it was to be listening 100% of the time. It's it's not quite right. So I think, yeah, I think four hours is a really sensible piece of advice. Um, in terms of tips for if you wake up during the early hours and your tinnitus seems intrusive, I don't know if you've ever had that, Vernon, have you? Yeah, yeah. Um... And sometimes it happens now as well. But um, so I would wake up in, sometimes wake up and the tinnitus would seem really loud. Um, and I would, you know, I'm using the sleep buds, I can hear it over the sleep buds. Um, so the first thing I would do is like take the sleep bud out. And that helped me to understand the tinnitus is actually louder it's just because i'm in a really quiet environment and what i started to realize was that tinnitus wasn't waking me up it was just a natural awakening that you we wake up several times during the night it's a natural part of our sleep cycle and um you know just the tinnitus seemed to be loud because i'd woken up at that particular time my mind was groggy and confused i did um i kind of did breathing and i did that exercise from i used used to use that and i still do if this happens, use that exercise, you know, where you turn out the light gradually. Mm. So you imagine you're, you visualize your body being bathed in a, you know, a lovely light. And then as you breathe, you start to, you know, quieten down that ang anxious feeling that you've got and um, turn the light out bit by bit. Um, and that, that really, really helped me to, to, um, to get past that. But it is, it's really, it is, it is horrible when it first, when you first experience it, it's distressing. Yeah, it's definitely. Because, yeah but. Definitely. We do think that do. in terms of the people I've spoken to, it does seem that breathing is the key um, in terms of at nighttime, sorry, just to get back to sleep or at least to feel calmer if you're, if you are awake. And if you find yourself lying there for more than kind of 45 minutes, then get up and you know, have a little wander around your house, do something else, and then get back into bed. Don't um, don't stay there stewing for for hours. Um, but yeah, I think a breathing technique at that at that point in the night is is definitely anecdotally. Lots of people um, have told me they find that really helpful. We're running low on time, but I just wanted to uh, Suzanne. I think Bernard said earlier he uses the Bose sleep buds. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, and. Um, Mary, how does therapy for tinnitus differ from therapy for pulsatile tinnitus? George is going to answer you that one. But just to be clear, we can help with um, so long as you've seen a seen a doctor to get the diagnosis, then we can definitely help with um, both. So perhaps George will write a more full answer there because um, I'm conscious I don't want to uh, keep you all 
uh, longer than I said we would. Um, finding yourself, um, okay, so what I just wanted to leave a moment to do, just in case people were curious, there's been a few questions about um, what we offer. So um, we have these webinars, we also have an app, as I said, and then um, the app, if we offer a portion of it for free, and then the full app at the moment is £10 a month. Uh, that's if you're in the UK. And um, we also offer these one-to-one -one sessions. Um, it's kind of coaching. I'm just going to share my screen so that you can see. Saves me rambling too much. Um, so this is the one-to-one -one coaching offer. And if you did want to sign up, then we can offer you 30% off your first month um, as a special webinar treat. <laughs> so um, yeah, if you did want to sign up, then uh, you're very welcome to. What we'll do is after this webinar, we'll follow up with an email and we'll include that link in the email that we send you. So don't worry too much about trying to um, get it down now. We'll send you the link and we'll send you the discount code so if you did want to meet with a therapist, as Vernon was um, just explaining, you can get signed up and we can get you booked in. Um, otherwise, I think um, that's us. I think George is working hard to answer the questions that I haven't had a chance to get to. So thank you so much, George. Um, and Vernon, thank you so much for willingly sharing your story. It's um. It's just brilliant to hear from our side, the Otto side. We spend a lot of time working on how to help people with tinnitus, but we often don't see them. <laughs> so it's really nice to um, get to actually talk to you and understand your, a bit more about your journey. So, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening. And, <laughs> yeah, no, it's a <laughs> real pleasure. And for all of us who've um, joined, it has been really good to have you all here. Thank you. And um, we'll have plenty more webinars to come. So keep your eyes peeled. And as I said, we'll be emailing you. We'll, I think we'll also be able to email you a recording of this webinar if you want to listen back to it. Um, yeah, so just let us know. But otherwise, have very lovely evenings or afternoons. And um, I'm sure we will see you all again soon. <laughs>